Hi, my name is Paul and welcome to The Learning Net. Okay, in this video I'm going to show you guys how to configure GNS3 and Secure Device Manager. We are going to run Secure Device Manager from my PC, from my web browser on my PC, to a router that is installed inside uh, GNS3's emulator program. Okay, so for in order for us to do that, we need to add a loopback adapter to our PC and all a loopback adapter is is a logical interface okay and then we'll map that logical interface inside GNS3 right let's go <clears throat> first thing I need to do is go inside my control panel go and add new hardware now my computer will want to scan for any hardware changes which crazy Microsoft likes to do even though that this is nothing physical it's logical so it shouldn't find anything I then just tell it, yes, I've already added the hardware. And I just need to tell it because you didn't find it, I need to tell it where it is. So it's new hardware. Um, select on the install the hardware that I manually select from a list in brackets advanced. Crazy Microsoft. And then just choose a um, network adapter. Click on next. Choose Microsoft and then choose Microsoft loopback adapter. Once you've done that, follow the prompts and you've now added a loopback adapter to your PC and once you click on finish you should be able to go to your network connections and you should be able to see the loopback adapter that you've added now this loopback adapter acts exactly the same way as a physical network card it's just a logical network card in my PC so I can configure it with an IP address which I've already done 172.16.1.1 I've given it a class C address um, and I've said just because I wanted to give it a gateway. Now this gateway is what the, my router is going to be inside GNS3, but it doesn't have to be, um, as you know, as long as it's on the same subnet. So <clears throat> I'm going to run GNS3 now and make the router that same address. Okay, so we don't need to install any of that. Minimize that, um, and then just start GNS3. You would have thought I'd have had that up already, wouldn't you? Thought I had. Okay, so GNS3 is now going to kick in. We're not going to bother about saving this project. Uh, so all I need to do is find a router, and I'm just going to choose any one. I'm going to choose a 3700 series router. Add it to the uh, design, and choose a cloud. Now, the cloud is what connects my physical PC to this logical router inside GNS3. So I need to configure the cloud first. I right-click on the cloud, go Configure, and a little configuration window will open. I just choose C1 because that is the only cloud that I have. And in this window here, I should see my loopback adapter. So as soon as you click on that, another window will open with all the interfaces that your machine has. And there it is there, Microsoft loopback adapter. And I click Add. That's now added it uh, into this cloud. And that's how we're going to make the connection between my PC and that router inside the cloud. Okay, so we will connect to that, that PC, uh, sorry, that router's uh, physical interface, although it's a logical router, I know, but that router's physical interface <laughs> inside the cloud. That really make much sense there. Right. Some of you, however, may not see your loopback interface inside this window. And if you don't see the loopback inside this window, you need to either reinstall GNS3, and once you reinstall GNS3, um, after you've installed your loopback adapters, um, that will then be in that window. Or you can rerun... Um, the WinPCAP program that comes with, with, with uh, the GNS3, GNS3 software, and that will um, install it as well. So that will definitely work. That's what I had to do. Okay, so all I need to do now is click on Apply. There's Apply, click on OK. All right, so that's the cloud configured. So now let's connect the router to the cloud. And we did say it was a fast Ethernet, and we're going to connect it to that particular interface that we've just added, because the cloud could have other interfaces as well. Uh, and I'm just choosing the one that I... Um, I pre-configured for it already. Okay, so that's that. So all I need to do now is go into the router and start it. He said. Okay, so that router should be starting, so I should be able to go into the console. I bring the console across. You can see now that image is decompressing. Okay, so it's going to take a couple of minutes, as most routers do. Uh, I'm just going to pause the video just to save some time, and we'll come back to it in a couple of seconds. Cheers. Okay, that's uh, started up now. Just... Uh, Ignore the system configuration dialog because why? Because we're engineers. We don't need the router telling us how to configure the device. We know how to do that. Okay, so let's uh, come on with the router. There we go. I can now log in because there is no config on this router. It's the first time it's been run. I can just now go into conf t, choose the interface which was fa0 slash 0. 
give it an IP address um, on the same subnet as my loopback adapter, which was 172.16.1, and we said we we're going to make it 254. Doesn't really matter as long as it is on that subnet. 255.255.255.0. We said it was going to be a class C address. And then just issue the no shut command, and hopefully all you guys know that whenever you put an IP address on an interface for the first time, it's worthwhile running the no shut command just to make sure that interface is indeed going to come up. Okay, and there we see it's changed state to up. So now, in theory, if I get out of there, I should be able to ping my loopback adapter inside my PC from the logical router inside GNS, which is quite amazing when you think about it, really. And there we go. Ding, 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 ding. Right, so now that I've proved that we do have some form of connection between the two, there should be no reason why when I launch um, SDM Security Device Manager, there should be no reason why Security Device Manager can't find that router inside GNS3. Although we do know that um, SDM is a bit finicky sometimes, so <laughs> I'm not counting my chickens just yet. And go. No, <laughs> I haven't got the power. Come on. Yep, I'm talking to you. Come on. And there we go. Right, you can see in the background that the um, GUI is actually starting to kickstart itself. Um, and once that starts, I'll just scroll down a bit and you can actually physically see that it is indeed the Secure Device Manager. And I should be able to configure that particular router inside GNS3 for my PC running SDM. Which, as I said, is quite remarkable. If, if it ever stops running, and if I click on the, uh, if I scroll this down and bring it into the window, you can see that I do indeed have Secure Device Manager. There's all my options. Click on Monitor. Uh, hopefully, we'll have the interface with an IP address come up in this window. There it is. There. Uh, that's the interface I configured. It is up, up, up. So I can run full SDM inside GNS3. Pretty remarkable. Okay, so what we'll do in um, a later series of videos is um, we'll probably run, um, I'll try and connect uh, a real router, a physical router that's running inside my lab to the router that's running inside GNS3. So I can build a logical network inside GNS3 and I can connect it to a physical one outside of GNS3. And we'll show you how to do that in a next series of videos. Uh, some of the things that we're going to show you is running Core Manager inside GNS3, running um, a soft phone. And then running Core Manager on a physical router inside my lab, uh, running a normal Cisco IP phone. And we'll show you how to connect all of that. So uh, hopefully we will see you in another couple of videos. Okay, I'd like to thank you for your time. As I said, my name is Paul, and this is The Learning Net. Thank you.